everybody. Ted Haggard here from the Storehouse Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And uh, with everything going on in the political world and the spiritual world, I wanted to just take 15 or 20 minutes today and speak a little differently than I usually do. Uh, and then we hopefully will have enough time to get to 1 Samuel, the second chapter, the first 11 verses, uh, just as a, a little cap at the end. Uh, my father was a veterinarian in Indiana. We grew up in Delphi, Indiana, and in the later my high school years in Yorktown, Indiana. And he was a member of the John Birch Society, which is a conservative right wing anti-communist organization. I remember in our front yard, this house sold on gold water signs and things like that. And um, and so I remember watching the old 16 millimeter videos of the communist scourge. It was red uh, growing around the world and how we were working to stop that scourge. And it was very interesting because communism with Marxism and Leninism was really birthed in the early years of the 19th century or the 20th century, the 1900s. And uh, then the the primary global lesson of the 20th century was um, that totalitarian regimes don't work and that communism does not work and that socialism does not work. But the people that are committed were committed to it were ideologues. They were so committed to the ideology that when their ideas didn't work, they would blame. And so because of it, they were responsible for like when um, uh, Pol Pot took over in Asia, he just slaughtered all the university people. Anybody that was wealthy enough to have a pair of glasses, they were killed during his purge. And Stalin, we've never known. They they laud him um, for having zero unemployment and things like that. But to do that, he killed somewhere between 25 and 50 million of his citizens. And uh, so leftists have never had good ideas that actually worked with human beings. And uh, that was really the lesson of the 20th century. And people seem to get that over a great deal of the world, except the intellectuals in America. And the intellectuals in America and those who love totalitarianism uh, have uh, ignored that fact. And so anyway, there was an evolution in communism uh, during the Nixon years, because uh, up until the Nixon years, there'd never been a war between any two countries that both had a McDonald's. And the reason for that was because uh, econ economists use that as an example to say, if there's trade going on between countries, they won't have a war against one another. And so uh, it was Nixon that brilliantly uh, sent Kissinger to China and worked to encourage the Chinese in developing some free market economics, because up until that time, there'd never been free market economics in a totalitarian regime. And uh, and so the, to the free market economics that developed prosperity and more goods and services for people than we'd ever experienced any time in the history of the world, that always was associated with uh, some kind of a constitutional government or a democratic or a republican government. And, um, and you know, I hope you know the difference between a republic and a democracy. If not, you can look that up. But um, uh, so China began the evolution of communism away from Maoist ideology, which was equity. Everybody looked the same. Everybody worked the same. Everybody made the same. Uh, whether you were a brain surgeon or a farmer, uh, it was equity throughout, which we're experimenting with uh, uh, now with typical uh, disastrous results. And um, uh, so... So Mao and Lenin and those groups had equity as their primary thing so that there weren't the oppressors and the oppressed and all of that. Uh, but they started using capitalism to develop wealth. And so now the modern communists uh, believe in using free market capitalism to a degree 
only under a one party system. And so when you deal with a socialist today or a communist today, they are advocates of a one party system, which is what the Democrat Party has become in America. They became very strong one party uh, people under Nancy Pelosi uh, as Speaker of the House. And of course, uh, Biden has continued that. And it's so interesting for me because I've watched the leftists take over countries all of my adult life. And now they're using the exact same playbook. Let me just give you a few of the highlights there. They always use the legal system to eliminate opposition. Uh, So you can think about that. Number two, they keep competitors off the ballot. It's very interesting to me how the Democrat Party has superdelegates, unlike the Republican Party. And the superdelegates really control who the nominees are. And Biden has very effectively kept uh, Kennedy off of uh, competing with him in the primaries. And the there's another candidate that wanted to compete with him in the primaries that's, that's been eliminated by the Democrat Party. And, um, and so they're very good at that. They always raise taxes in order to increase, increase the power of the central government. Uh, they always increase central authority, and we're seeing that play out very clearly with the uh, Texas thing and the and the federal government. Uh, they always blame, blame, blame. If they're not in America, they blame America. In in Cuba, they still blame America for all their problems. Albania always blamed America for all. Leftism has never worked. Socialism has never worked. Communism has never worked. These ideas have never worked. And it's a fundamental core misunderstanding of human nature is what it was. And so um, so they always blame. And if you'll notice, uh, the current leftists in power in America right now, blame, 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 constantly blame for their own failures. Um, They claim that they are successful, though, and they act like they are totally successful because they're ideologues. And so when you are devoted to an ideology, the facts no longer matter. The facts no longer speak to you and you'll distort the facts. All right. And they've done that for over 100 years when taking over a country and they control the press, the media and the schools. And we've watched that. It's been interesting because when the covid thing happened, people found out for the first time what our schools were teaching their children in the K through 12 years. And then when the Israel war started, we started to find out about all the anti-Semitism that was being taught in our colleges and universities. And so the the conservatives, people who believe in democracy, and it's so interesting how the leftists say they're defenders of democracy. They've always done that. They always say they're going to give us the people power through a republic or through a democracy. But it's always one party rule. And that is the goal right now. And, of course, they always have to punish private business. And it's been interesting to me with this uh, new secretary of transportation and with Biden, whenever something happens with an airline or a railroad or whatever, they say they're going to hold them accountable. And what they do is they they break them financially and they punish them. They don't help them. They they they're not government by and for the people. So it's very, very interesting to watch this process here as they're calling those who defend democracy and believe in democracy and will actually believe in us being a constitutional republic. Those are the people that are becoming the, quote, enemies of democracy in in their view. And I'm startled that thinking, seemingly thinking people actually believe it. And so so it's amazing to me how this goes on, because the anti-Semitism that we're seeing right now, it's not going to be very long before that's fully translated into anti-Christian and that the Christians will be the haters. And and, uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to watch this. Well, here we are as Christians, Bible believing Christians. We believe in the power of God. And we believe in freedom and liberty. We do not believe in a one-party system. We believe our deliberative bodies were to deliberate and come up with the best ideas. Freedom of the press is to deliberate ideas and come up with the best ideas. 
freedom of speech and freedom of religion is to let the various ideas work within a group of reasonable people and come up with the best ideas. Well, in 1 Samuel 1 and 1 Samuel 2, we have a godly woman who was unable to have a child. And she was mocked. She was made fun of. She was harassed. She was so uh, abused that she would weep. She would cry. And she was actually praying one time so desperately, the men, the man of God accused her, falsely accused her of being a drunk. And so when you've been falsely accused, when you've been hurt, when you've been wounded, all those types of things, here we come up with a situation where she's like that, and then she conceives by God's grace and has Samuel. And because she has Samuel, in 1 Samuel 2, she she's going to dedicate Samuel to the Lord, and he ends up transforming Israel in a wonderful way. This was her prayer. My heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemies. I rejoice because you rescued me. No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Okay, so here she is glorifying God. Now, let me tell you, I just gave you an overview of what's happening in America and how the leftists are moving in America and how it's not. And I'm shocked that they're using the exact same playbook in America that they have for over 100 years. It's always failed every time it's failed. And uh, and we're we've got people devoted to it that uh, think themselves wise, but in fact, have become fools. All right. So then. Here, Hannah, the mother of Samuel, starts commenting on the people that have been attacking her. She says, stop acting so proud and haughty. Don't speak with such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows what you have done. He will judge your actions. The bow of the mighty is now broken, and those who stumbled are now strong. Those who stumbled are now strong. That's talking about people like you and me. All right. Here he says, those who are well-fed are now starving communists all over the world. See, I mean, what, what she is doing to the Chinese people, the average Chinese people, what's going on with Putin? Putin's not a communist. He's just an old-fashioned dictator. But what he's doing to his people is just amazing. I mean, you can see it in Ukraine and you can see what Hamas, the most ungodly, their anti-civilization, anti-God group, they actually admit it. Some of our intellectuals think Islam and Christians worship the same God. It is not true. And Hamas actually wants to destroy the Christians and destroy the Jews because we worship a different God and they know it. All right. And they actually put it in their in their uh, things. They say those who are well fed are now starving and those who are starving are now full. <laughs> the childless woman has now is now has seven children and the woman with many children wastes away. The Lord gives both death and life. He brings some down to the grave and raises others up. The Lord makes some poor and others rich. He brings some down and others he lifts up. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, placing them in seats of honor. Now, why am I covering this? I'm covering this because I want every one of you that are listening to this and every one of you <coughs> that have had this forwarded to you to repent of following false prophets and following false teachers and go back to the Bible and seek the Lord for the restoration of America. Because right now, the majority of Americans are believing a lie. And so here it says, for all the earth is the Lord's, and he has set the world in order. So if we want the Lord to continue reigning, 
<laughs> in a beautiful way in America, every one of us need to seek the Lord because right now, I don't see a lot of indicators that the Lord is blessing and defending us. I see a lot of indicators that there is a fog over the minds of Americans and that the God of this world, the devil, has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. And we have to seek the Lord in earnest or we are going to go away that we never thought was possible, where we don't have a constitution to protect us or we have people in power that don't believe the constitution that accuse those who believe the Constitution of being against democracy. Here we have, he will protect the faithful ones, but the wicked will disappear in darkness. No one will succeed by strength alone. Those who fight against the Lord will be shattered. He thunders against them from heaven. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives power to his king. He increases the strength. Of his anointed one. It's time to pray, everybody. The Lord Jesus bless you. Bye bye.